Look what orcas have come up with. This seal probably thought that he was the smartest one here. He climbed up on the ice, which means that orcas will not get to him. But he didn't consider that orcas have figured out how to make waves to push seals off the ice. Or if the ice flow is large enough, they simply smash it, like you can see in this video. Yes, the seals had a bad plan, and they failed to outsmart the orcas. But we also have some creatures like turtles, ducks, deer, toads, iguanas, and many others who use their smarts to outwit the predators. Curious about how they pulled it off? Keep watching until the end. This is a water chevrotain, endemic to the jungles of Africa, which is closely related to antelopes, pigs, deer, and even bison. It might be hard to believe because this animal sets itself apart from its older relatives with its size. It doesn't grow taller than 14 inches at the shoulder. Surprisingly, this size becomes an advantage when it comes to escaping the attention of a massive predatory eagle. Picture this. We've got an animal that can hold its breath, dive underwater, and even swim. You can spot water chevra trains in tropical lowland forests, and they tend to stick close to rivers and streams in their habitat. They never venture more than 820 feet away from the water because they know it's their lifeline. Water chevrotains make for easy pickings for various predators that share their habitat. It's no surprise predators target them given that these animals have no real defenses. Their survival strategy is taking a dive into the water, but they perfected this strategy. First, they just hide in some body of water, and if things get dangerous, they go all in, plunging themselves underwater completely out of sight. And keep in mind, there's plenty of water around here, so a chevrotain can dive into one spot and pop up somewhere totally different, far from the predator's reach. You can be a skilled hunter, but trying to guess exactly where your target will swim off to is pretty much impossible. The water chevrotain isn't the only animal out there with this savvy survival strategy. Two kinds of Asian mouse deer also pulled the same trick to dodge predators. People living in rural Indonesia have also said that mouse deer, when chased by their dogs, take a dip in the water. And it's not just when danger's right there. During the study, one of these mouse deer swam underwater the moment it sensed the scientists were looking at it. Over the next hour, the team could spot it resurfacing for air four or five times, trying to stay out of their sight. And while it probably came up for a breather a few more times without them catching on, it's clear this animal can hold its breath for over five minutes at a time. Considering that small animals have a big adrenaline rush when they hold their breath, five minutes is quite a long time. When you delve into the world of animal survival strategies, you quickly realize that water often comes to the rescue against many predators. Take tigers, for instance, those fierce hunters armed with precision, power, and agility. Surprisingly, their Achilles heel appears to be ducks. Steve dug up loads of these stories, not just one or two, but a whole bunch. It turns out there are many cases where a random duck takes a dip into a tiger's watering hole, and when the predator thinks it's got an easy lunch, the duck manages to outsmart it. The duck skillfully slips underwater every time the tiger makes a dash for it, over and over again. The perplexed predator can only watch in amazement and wonder, where did it go? But what's the explanation behind this, especially since both tigers and ducks are skilled swimmers? Take, for instance, a tiger. It can swim at around 4 miles per hour. Surprisingly, ducks, despite being smaller or no slouches either, they cruise at speeds ranging from 2 to 6 miles per hour, depending on the species. The key distinction is that tigers aren't exactly fans of taking a dip. They can do it if absolutely necessary, but they'd rather keep their heads dry. Ducks, on the other side, have no qualms about getting wet, and they're champs at holding their breath for 20, 30, or even a whopping 50 seconds, so it turns out hiding at the bottom of the pond isn't such a bad idea for the ducks. Check out this toad right here. If you think it kind of resembles a pebble, well, you're spot on. This toad uses that feature to its advantage when it's up against predators. When it feels threatened, it does something pretty cool. It tucks in its legs, pulls back its neck, and curls up into a ball. Yep, it turns into a pebble. And since it often stays on slopes, it just rolls downhill so quickly that predators probably don't even realize they missed a potential meal. Especially when you consider its blackish, almost dark gray color that blends right in with the sandy rocks. 
Against that backdrop, the Toad practically disappears. It's a pretty nifty defense move. But here's the thing. Its main predators are spiders and snakes, and they're not falling for a simple disguise. They're bigger, faster, and fiercer, so this Toad has to turn into a rolling pebble act to make a quick getaway. For the sake of this cool feature, the frog had to give up a lot. It's not the best swimmer or jumper. But thanks to its unique body design, it takes a hit like a champ when it falls. You can bet that any other toad probably couldn't handle such a steep slope descent. But this one not only survives, but also feels good enough to slip into a safe crack in the rock below. Especially since this rapid descent, it's bound to be a few minutes ahead. Though sometimes all you need to do to hide from a predator is to stay perfectly still. You've probably seen this tactic in horror movies. If you don't move, the monster might just pass by. Surprisingly, this strategy isn't just fiction. It actually works in real life. Take the case of a baby marine iguana born on a beach in one of the Galapagos Islands. Right from the get-go, it realizes the world is like a minefield. Well, not literally, but the shoreline where it was born is crawling with hungry snakes. Each one of these snakes has its eyes on the iguana, hoping it becomes their lunch or dinner. Now this little iguana, just born, has only two tricks up its sleeve. The first one is its smarts. Predatory snakes don't see too well, but they're masters at sensing movement when they hunt. So when a snake slithers closer, the iguana stays still, freezing like it forgot how to breathe. The snake crawls by, clueless that dinner's just a foot away. The problem is the iguana can't hold still forever. Sooner or later, it's got to ditch the beach and find some food. That's when the iguana uses its other trick, speed and agility. What happens then is like a scene straight out of a Hollywood action flick. Stirred by the commotion, a bunch of snakes pop out of the rock cracks, ready to join the chase. The iguana bolts, ducks, and at times, it seems like game over for it. However, the iguana manages to outwit the predators. Oh, and guess what? Turns out those iguanas in the video are actually different ones. The operators for Planet Earth 2 weren't entirely honest with the viewers, but here's the kicker. That scene still won a BAFTA award back in 2017. Well, that's awkward. But even with all that, it doesn't change the fact that iguanas can outsmart those sneaky snakes. If not, those snakes would have gobbled them up. We're still trying to figure out exactly what's going on in this video. What we can see is that the snake's head is stuck inside the turtle's shell and it's stuck so tight that the snake is panicking and can't break free. Snakes and turtles, you know, have a complicated relationship. Depending on the species, either one of them could end up as the hunter or the hunted. So what really went down with these two animals? Well, there are just two possible scenarios in play here. The turtle might have tucked hidden in its shell, and the snake, trying to go for a quick bite on the turtle's vulnerable head, ended up getting stuck because the opening wasn't quite snake-sized. Now they're both trapped inside that shell, probably not happy about that. The second theory is that the turtle itself bit the snake's head and dragged it inside the shell. Either way, it's a smart strategy. The snake's so freaked out that even if it had plans to grab a bite earlier, it's pretty much forgotten about that. It's not easy to think about food when your head's stuck in a turtle. Spoiler. At the end of this video, the snake breaks free and crawls away. And guess what? It was very lucky, because it was unharmed. Although turtles don't have sharp teeth, nature has given almost all of them powerful jaws. And we're not even talking about the giant turtle that can bite through a broomstick. Even the red-eared slider turtle, a popular pet, can cause serious harm if you make it angry. A turtle's bite is painful, and if the fingers it bites aren't large, it can cause injury. Also, a turtle's bite is strong enough to bite a small snake in half. Do snakes know this? My guess is that they do. In a showdown between a turtle and a snake, if the snake comes out on top, it can turn its defeated opponent into a nest. Believe it or not, back in April 2021, folks in Geneva County, Alabama stumbled upon a rather odd discovery while doing some landscaping. What initially seemed like a weird, distorted dinosaur egg turned out to be a pair of snake eggs snugly placed inside the shell of a small, deceased turtle. It's worth noting that most snake moms typically bury their eggs in loose soil or rotten logs, but this particular snake apparently thought it had stumbled upon a safer spot. And you can't blame it, because turtle shells are pretty tough, not to mention comfy looking. When it comes to crabs and stingrays, things get interesting. 
Crabs sport hard shells, but they're not hunting stingrays. Stingrays, on the other hand, have a taste for crabs that have recently molted. These crabs haven't had time to harden their new shells, so they're like a fast food treat for stingrays. No need to break a sweat to eat them. Well, it's pretty much like how people eat oysters. The stingray glides over the crab it wants to munch on and hauls it into its mouth. It usually has to suck in and spit out the same crab a few times to savor all the meat. By the end of it, all that's left is an empty shell and the stingray casually discards it. And then it just keeps swimming. A 13-foot-long stingray can chow down on about 50 crabs every day. Surprisingly, crabs aren't just aware of the presence of a menacing predator nearby. They also seem to recognize exactly who's in danger. They lend a helping claw to their buddies, almost as if they're doing it on purpose. Crabs put together living pyramids with their bodies. At the top, you'll find the beefy crabs with solid shells, while inside the pyramid, the new softshell crabs find shelter. The stingray can't physically reach the easy pickings, and it's just not worth its energy to crack those tough shells. The BBC Earth filming crew had quite a chuckle when they stumbled upon a skittish crab with a delicate shell seeking refuge under their crab-shaped robot. It seems this crab was accustomed to its fellow crustaceans offering protection, and strangely enough, everything worked out smoothly, and it's doubtful that this crab even realized that the robot crab was very unusual. In fact, at one point, the other crabs seemed to think that the robot crab needed some safeguarding and started forming a living pyramid around it. And this, let's admit it, that's just adorable. While crabs stick together, echidnas have mastered the art of going solo. Yet, they can hold their own against a gang of dingoes. To start with, echidnas are basically solitary mammals. When it comes to protection, evolution has equipped them with tough fur and spines, which are essentially toughened up hairs made of the same stuff that forms fur, animal claws, and human fingernails, which is keratin. Even with their prickly weaponry, echidnas are quite jittery creatures. Whenever they sense danger, their go-to move is to dive into the dirt thanks to their strong front paws that act as diggers while giving predators a hard time to pull them out. How's that possible, you ask? Well, those spines sure come in handy. And if they can't dig, echidnas just roll up into a ball, kind of like hedgehogs. Once again, their spines offer great protection. Echidnas have quite a bunch of potential threats to watch out for, like feral cats, foxes, and dingoes. When they curl up into a ball, it's almost impossible for anyone to reach them. When facing a tough predator, echidnas flex their back muscles to make their sharp spines stick out more. Now, when it comes to dingoes, they might try taking a nibble or two, but eventually they give up. Keep in mind that when dingoes are in a pack, they can even take on a bull. But you see, the echidna isn't anything like a bull. Bulls don't come with spines. But let me tell you, even though they're not porcupines, those echidna spines are still painful enough to make predators think twice, even when there's a whole pack of them. But what do you do if you're just a penguin that's been chosen as dinner by a giant petrel? A bunch of giant petrels going after a king penguin, chomping down while it's still alive, really shows how ferocious these birds can get. When it comes to a grown-up penguin, a whole gang of petrels can make a meal out of it. But if it's a lonely penguin chick, one petrel's all it takes. And if that penguin is smaller than the rest, there's no escape for it. See, petrels are smart. They go for the easier prey. Why waste energy on a tough target when there's an easy one right under your beak? But this little dude's got some tricks up his feathers. At first, he manages to slip away. Luckily, the petrel only got a hold of his fluff. The young penguin doesn't run towards its parents. That's because the adult penguin beside it isn't its mom or dad. You can tell this by how the young penguin occasionally tries to nudge the chick away, pecks at it, and even seems to want to move away, abandoning the chick to fend for itself. Why? Simply because it's not their problem or responsibility. However, the penguin chick knows deep down that this is the only chance to survive. So it clings desperately to the adult, almost playing a game of hide-and-seek by twirling around to create a barrier between itself and the predator. It's actually a deadly game that's very hard to win. But this chick is just incredibly lucky. Eventually, the petrel loses interest and decides to snack on the carrion that's lying around. King penguins aren't the only ones who are troubled by giant petrels. Take the Gen 2 penguin, for instance. These little fellas are even tinier, making them prime targets for these hungry predators. What's even more unsettling is that petrels go after the tiniest and frailest penguin chicks. 
They got a preference for the most vulnerable part of the chick, the base of its head. That spot lacks the protective layer of fat and muscle, making it an easy target for these relentless birds. In a showdown like this, the chick doesn't stand a chance. Petrels are bigger, heavier, and they act like they're in some infinite berserk mode. But here's the twist. The penguin's dad steps in to help. It swoops in and helps the chick break free from the petrel's deadly grip. Check this out. Those wings that can't help the penguin fly turn out to be pretty handy in a brawl. Ever thought you'd see a penguin throwing some karate moves? Oh, well, what's the point of these? <laughs> what's a weaver ant to do when attacked by a giant forest ant, one of the world's largest ants? Soldier ants can measure up to 1.2 inches, whereas weaver ants only grow to around 0.4 inches, which are clearly different weight classes. As long as the weaver ant can stay out of the giant forest ant's bite range, it can survive. But the giant forest ant could easily snap it in half once it gets close. There's only one thing preventing this. The weaver ant's firm grip on the giant forest ant's antenna, the one place its mandibles can't reach. And that, in itself, is quite clever. This little guy actually laid down a pheromone trail that's going to summon a bunch of its buddies. Think of it like a quick response squad. And once the reinforcements are in, the battle starts looking pretty one-sided. Though it's rather odd to call it that with such a size difference. From the side, it seems like the ants are just holding the big guy to prevent him from getting away. But in reality, they're actually taking a bite out of their foe, causing injuries, and then spraying some nasty acid they've stored in their bellies on top of that. It's not about hurting their enemy, though. You see, that acid in good amounts makes the giant forest ant's tough shell go all soft and mushy so it becomes easy to pull apart. All you gotta do is give it a little time. And these weaver ants are waiting, keeping the big guy pinned down. And think they know no one's gonna rush to help the ant that became a target? These big ants find food on their own so they don't leave a trail behind them. Bet they're regretting that choice now. That's why it's a good idea to let your family and friends know when you're heading out alone. Mountain Goat versus Mountain Lion When Mother Nature created mountain goats, it didn't expect they would need to run away from anybody. Their bodies are built to keep them balanced. Nowadays, scientists have figured out that the leading cause of death for these animals is the steep hills they call home, not predators at all. In other words, mountain goats are more likely to tumble and fall to their death than bump into a predator bold enough to climb these treacherous slopes. When they come face to face with a mountain lion, a goat doesn't make a break for it like some other animals might. It just anchors its hooves even tighter against the rocks. Sometimes it even takes a swing at the hungry cat trying to toss it over the edge. The mountain lion finds itself in a tight spot. One wrong move and it'll either get flung off the cliff or get skewered by sharp horns. In the end, the predator has no choice but to go hunt for a less risky meal. And no, waiting around for the goat to slip and fall isn't on the table for the mountain lion. Actually, it wouldn't mind carrion, but you could starve to death waiting for that to happen. Lizard versus Bobcat When you first see it, you might mistake it for a snake because it slithers around with its long, sleek body without legs, but it actually belongs to a unique group of legless lizards. However, for the bobcat that's stalking this reptile, whether it has legs or not doesn't seem to matter at all. Though it really should. Bobcats are skilled at catching both snakes and lizards, but only the latter manages to escape alive. Just as any self-respecting lizard would, this one swiftly ditches its tail and freezes while the tail continues to squirm nearby. See the expression on the bobcat's face? It's genuinely surprised by what happened. But like any typical cat, the bobcat eventually goes for the moving target, which is the tail. It walks away with its prize in its mouth, not even realizing that in this showdown there are two victors. The lizard will regrow its tail and carry on with life as if nothing happened. Escape Artist You don't need to be a genius to flee from danger. Actually, you don't even need a brain. Meet Stomphia. What a beauty, wouldn't you agree? Stomphia is a species of small sea anemones, the simplest of marine invertebrates. They're very simple, no bones, no brains, and no grand ambitions. These creatures spend their entire lives anchored to rocks or shells, snacking on plankton, and they seem perfectly content with that. However, there's something fascinating about sea anemones. They appear to possess a kind of personality and can even make decisions when faced with extreme situations. Remember deer that freeze in their tracks when a car approaches? Well, sea anemones are a step ahead of them. 
They may not be dealing with road traffic, but they do have their own set of predators, starfish. Some time ago, researchers uncovered an intriguing behavior in sea anemones which find themselves in danger. When a starfish aims to have a sea anemone for lunch, the anemone, well, it unfastens itself from its cozy spot, starts wiggling its entire body, and swims away. Picture your potted plant doing the same. It doesn't just drag itself to safety, it latches onto a new spot and stays put. Yes, in fact, it's the most common escape that literally every living thing on the planet is capable of. Even the very small creatures. But we're talking about a creature devoid of brains or consciousness. Given these circumstances, even this seemingly straightforward action appears rather remarkable. It's like a blend of daring feet and getting a degree in nuclear physics. Armadillo versus Snake the rattlesnake relies on its venom to hunt, using it to immobilize and kill its prey. It usually ambushes its target, delivers a bite, and then patiently waits before devouring its meal, following the classic hunting routine. Interestingly, when it comes to the armadillo, it'd make for a great meal for the snake if not for the, you know, this little armored critter doesn't even have to break a sweat to avoid being snake food. When the snake lunges and goes in for a bite, it basically just smacks into the armadillo, and that's where the snake's dinner plans hit a brick wall. According to studies, the snake's fangs are no match for the armadillo's tough hide. Imagine being born as a snake and feeling like you hit the jackpot, only to have an armadillo cross your path. Clueless Hunters Remember how lizards sometimes freeze up when they're around a snake to avoid being spotted? Well, it turns out it's not just lizards that do this trick. This frog does the same thing when a snake's around. It knows that if it makes any move, the snake will spot it. But here's the wild part. On the video, you can see something pretty unusual. The snake practically slithers right over the frog, even touches it a few times, but still can't seem to realize that its meal is right under its nose. The snake can smell it, but it's like it can't put two and two together to find the frog, even though it's right there. In the end, the snake gives up and slithers away with an empty stomach. Well, this frog certainly has nerves of steel. See you later.